In the last video, we talked about a check register. And so a check register is you making a list of all of the money that comes in and out of your checking account so that you know exactly how much money you can spend out of your account. Sometimes the bank doesn't know about exactly how much money you have to spend. If I write a check to RG&E and give it to RG&E, the bank's not going to know about that for a couple days until the check clears. So I want to make sure that I know how much money I have to spend, even if the bank doesn't know. And so one of the important ideas that we're going to talk about in this video is the idea of reconciling. So reconciling in the real world means two things agreeing with each other, two people coming to an agreement about something that they disagree about, is they're reconciling their differences. What we mean here is that I want to reconcile my check register, which is how much money I think is in my checking account, with my monthly bank statement, which is how much money the bank thinks I have in my account. So we want to reconcile these two lists and make sure that they agree with each other so that we all agree how much money is in my checking account. Or if we don't agree, that I understand every single thing that we disagree about. All right, let's see what that looks like. So I am going to pop over to the document camera. All right, so here's the check register we were talking about in the last video. And this is an example of the bank statement that Sally got for September. So let's see what happens here. So the way that this bank statement is laid out is we've got the previous balance at the end of the last month with $275 and $280.01 was deposited in and all of the deposits are covered in this portion. So there were two deposits at the South 15 branch, $463.60 were withdrawn. All the withdrawals are here. So we've got some checks, we've got a debit card, and we've got two ATM fees. And each one of them is listed here. And so this comes out to a new balance of $91.41. This is what the bank thinks happened between September 1st and September 30th. So let's reconcile that with our check register, which talks about all of the money that we know that came in and out of the account during this time. All right, so we have here a deposit of $144.01. So a deposit of $144.01 is right there. So I am going to put a check mark right there and a check mark right here to say that that is in both of these accounts. All right. Do I have a deposit of $136 on September 5th? Let's see. Deposit, I think it was on September 2nd, I deposited $136. They didn't put the money in my account until the 5th, but in any event, it was a deposit of $136. So that's checked off as well. Let's look at all the withdrawals. So on September 3rd, we had check 301 for $15.78. So I find 301 on my register, 1578. So that's on both of the lists. Check 302 is for $375. Here is check 302 for $375. How about check 303 for $27.32? 303 for $27.32. All right. Did I make a debit card withdrawal of $3.50 on the 9th? Absolutely. The place that they said, everything lines up. So you can see that the bank and I are agreeing about all of these things that happened during the month, which is very good news. All right. On 916, I withdrew $40 and there was a $2 bank fee. Did that happen over here? I remember us talking about that in the last video. All right. So all of those things that happened in the bank statement, I agree that all of those happened. If there was something here that wasn't on the list, then maybe I made a debit card payment that I forgot to put in my in my check register. So I want to be sure to go back and make sure to add that to my check register. All right. Now let's look at the other things here because there are some things that happened here that aren't on the bank statement. 
All right, so I made, uh, I made, I wrote a check to buy these jeans for forty three seventy two. Uh, I wrote, I made a, a debit card payment to buy some ice cream, and I deposited some extra money. So that is um, something that happens in my check register, but not on the bank statement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my reconciling worksheet. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bank statement balance. The new balance is $91.41. I'm going to add all of the outstanding deposits. So here's the $30 outstanding deposit. All of these entries, this $43.72 withdrawal goes there. The $2.75 withdrawal goes there. And the $30 deposit goes here. So you can see this is deposits outstanding and withdrawals outstanding. So my outstanding deposits, well, there's just one. So that's a total of $30. So I want to add these two numbers together. 9141 plus 30 is equal to $121 and 41 cents. And then I want to subtract my outstanding withdrawals. So my total outstanding withdrawals are 43.72 plus 2.75. So that's $46 and 47 cents. $46 and 47 cents is my total outstanding withdrawals. And then I subtract C minus D. 121.41 minus 46.47. So that's a total of 74.94. All right. And so that total amount is what I should have at the bottom of my check register. Let's check. So at my checking register, I come down and my total down here at the bottom is 74.94, just like I saw at the bottom of my reconciling worksheet. Okay, so I have just reconciled my check register with my checking account statement. So there were a few things the bank didn't know about that I needed to make sure that when I add and subtracted them, uh, that I now know that I have the same amount of money that, that the bank thinks that I have. So that means I did a great job, or Sally did a great job, of doing her check register because she didn't forget anything when she made any payments or made any withdrawals. She registered every one of them in the check register. So that was awesome of her. And because she has that kind of discipline, that makes it really unlikely that she's going to have any problems with overdrafts because when it comes time for her to spend something, if somebody says, do you want to go out to lunch or, you know, do you want to buy something, this thing that costs $80, then Sally can look at her check register and say, you know what, I don't have $80 in my account right now. Even though if she looks at her, um, if she looks at the balance in her checking statement, she would think that she has $91, but she knows that she has $74.94. So it's that kind of discipline of having a check register that allows her to avoid making overdrafts. I'm gonna have you uh, do your own example of reconciliation using your own uh, check register and statement that's down in the next activity. So go ahead and do that and uh, do your best to, to incorporate this idea into your financial lifestyle because making sure that you don't have overdraft pay, uh, fees that you have to pay is, uh, I want to say, 85% on you. Every once in a while, something happens. Maybe a company messes up and charges you twice for something, and so uh, you wind up being overdrawn. But what you can do at that point is you can call the bank and you can say, hey, don't charge me $35 for this. It was that company over there that messed up. And the bank is going to take your side on this. And they're going to say, yep, that wasn't you at all. Let me make sure that I don't penalize you for that company's mistake. 
Okay, so having a check register and reconciling your accounts, as we can see, are really uh, fantastic habits to get into.